a lot of things we've talked about at India's Pura for the last two days, espoused about, you know, education, giving back to community, a little bit of uh, transformational projects that we can do, uh, accepting healthcare. I think what we are trying to do in our effort at Team Indus, which is a transformational project in India to put, to, to do the first private mission to the moon, is very similar to a lot of things we've done at Dias, uh, at, uh, talked at Indi India's Pura for the last two days. Okay, so just a background, we are a, you don't hear of, we are more space than aerospace, but since aerospace is an easier thing to say, I'll stick to that. We are an aerospace company from India, you don't hear much of these, uh, you know, really sprouting out of India. We had an opportunity to be a part of the Google X Prize competition, and Google runs a lot various competitions, and this was one. And the goal of the competition was to actually do this, to promote innovation in various countries. Um, it's been a three-ish, a four-ish year ride. I, I, I recently came on board, and we have been ranked among the top three teams in the world already. And our current mission is basically to land on the moon, move 500 meters, and send pictures from the moon back to the earth. So that's the, that's the grand ending of the competition. And the, here's the funny part, it has to be 90% privately funded. Uh, we have won a couple of milestone prizes. We, you know, we funded a few things ourselves. We are very lucky to be in India. This is another thing that can happen only in India. You have ISRO, which has done the Mangalyan and done various projects and has got a great recognition for that. And we have a lot of talent pool of available space scientists. And we have got close to 12 of them on our payrolls. And we're talking probably another 12 to 15 to come on our payrolls. So we have, you know, an excellent base of engineers who are roughly 20, 25. We have these great engineers who have probably 30, 40 years of experience working in India, in ISRO. And we have a few, you know, guys like me in the middle who are kind of trying to do things all over. So this, again, could not have happened anywhere else. And I want to emphasize that again, because the next space innovation, I'll get to that in a bit, but the space industry, you know, because of what Elon Musk has done, a few other people have done, the foundation is shaking. And India is in the right place, you know, like what happened in outsourcing in early in late 80s, uh, a few other things on, on, on after that. India is the right place to take advantage of it, and we want to be in the forefront of that. Uh, we have signed up with a few marquee partners. So I'll just quickly run through this. It's more a technical presentation, so uh, um, anybody has details, we, you, we can talk. We do need to launch on the ISRO PSLV uh, uh, rocket. And after that, using our own capabilities, this is our, our, our lander, we will go and land in the moon. This is just, again, a mission profile, gives, gives you more technical details. Anybody who wants technical details, come by. Um, the first, this is what I want to do. Well, again, what we have been able to do in this transformational period for, for our organization, it, again, is obviously India's first private space mission. It is 100% indigenously designed by our 20, 25-year-old people, supported by these engineers, supported by the ex astro staff. We are... On a rough comparison that Google did, our, the cost of our mission is one-sixth of what the Americans are doing. So again, transformational even from a cost angle. Local integration, we're trying to do everything ourselves. We do, we, we do have to buy components. Since the space industry in India has not evolved, I do have to buy engines, thrusters, and various other things from the US, from the West. But the integration, the design knowledge is something we are building in-house, and we have the capability. Uh, series of components on board. It's a, so that is, a, that is an engineering version. It's subject to change over the next few months. Uh, series of things. And one of the unique things about this mission, the subsystems we operate is pretty much touches every angle of science, you know, from guidance navigation control to structural mechanics to electronics, avionics. So it's a complete comprehensive thing that uh, we, we've been able to do with this. This is, this is our rover that we're landing, and this is actually on display in Bangalore, and we've got a lot of uh, press review about this. And this is a, a pretty unique rover that we have already. And we have to obviously keep in mind the conditions in the moon, so which is why the, the lunar surface is very, very uneven. So a few of these characteristics we have to do, 
to make sure that it you know traverses the 500 feet in space in in moon in the moon sorry uh, so this is the part i just talked about elon musk so what elon and a few other people have done is they have changed the industry from a taxpayer funded industry you know over the, over the 90s and the 2000s to an entrepreneur risk taking based industry and the first thing that they that happens when an entrepreneur comes in is innovation happens and cost comes down so that is already happening and we as an organization are now looking beyond the moon mission our moon mission is touch wood all going well we are, we are scheduled to launch mid next year the question is what do we do after that we have built capabilities in as i said in 6 to 8 subsystems over the last 3ish years what can we redeploy those capabilities and actually build out a complete comprehensive organization that goes on for you know for a longer time and that's what we're doing we are building assets in various levels of space <clears throat> a lot of one of the underlying principles for the whole thing is a lot of problems and my colleague from kumbhaton is also here a lot of problems cannot be solved from the earth anymore so you need imaging your wifi communication terrestrial can only do so much we feel that a certain layer of solutions have to be provided from space and space doesn't need to be you know outer space it can it can be from a drone all the way up and communication is one of those big things communication is one of those big things that actually it gets transformed when you start looking at a, a you know a drone giving wifi for a for a kumbhaton obviously e governance is a big thing for remote areas a couple of colleagues talked about uh, remote health centers telemetry so the, you can do a certain amount of medical care but you need connectivity that connectivity can again be provided seamlessly by the private sector at a very low cost using space assets and obviously disaster recovery nepal is another classic example you have no communication infrastructure to get it and actually haiti was a classic case where um, two organizations jumped in and actually flew drones uh, flew drones are i think four four years back and that's been proven to be a successful model <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at uh, a high altitude long endurance is our long term pitch we're looking at this probably two and a half three years from now and this is again transformation so going to moon is our level 1 providing communication and infrastructure assets is level 2 is phase 2 and we are looking at uh, the next level of issues and this will solve a lot of connectivity uh, controlling issues uh, all over the place now what's the impact it's provided a lot of us got into this to because it is fun because it is interesting and then we realize you know what not only is it fun interesting it's also impactful and we've done a series of outreach programs and this is just a small uh, listing of what we what what we think we bring to the table or our, our organization brings to the table Two, one. we have a lift off today we're challenging private teams from around the world to design and build robotic explorers and race them to the surface of the moon. I think we ran out of doing crazy stuff on planet Earth, so that's the next place to go. The primary motivation for us was definitely patriotism. There was no Indian team in the competition, so we said we have to enter the fray. Let's look at the pinnacle of science and technology and engineering, and let's compete at the world and see if we can win. I'm truly amazed at how fast they've been able to do a design that has been certified by experts and has actually been rated as one of the top three in the world in a global competition. The dream was always to build something which goes, you know, throws the ball out of the park. So now we're doing this, which is an aerospace solution, which hopefully is going to land on the moon soon. This is the first time you're seeing an entrepreneurial effort in space research which is what team industry stands for 
and I think when they win, India wins. So that's our mission, a uh, little bit patriotic, a little bit, uh, you know, commercial, a little bit impact oriented, but you know, we believe in not having only one particular vision. So we are on, we are on for all of these. I'll just go back to the last slide, if you don't mind. How can you be a part of this? So be the change that we want to be, you know, sign up. So we have a sponsorship model. We have a funding model in which we're diluting equity to collect money. And we have an, uh, an absolute donation model. So we have various things and we are building it out over the next six months. You'll see, you'll hear a lot more about us in the media and about our efforts to outreach. But yeah, sign up, sign up with us to do anything you want. Help us build any talent you have, any capability you have, any contacts you have. I have yet not met a person who does not want to be a, be a part of this project in some manner. It's, it's something that is core aspirational about this, you know, India succeeding, want us succeeding, going to space, the whole thing. So again, uh, email information is there. So please feel free to get in touch with us. Whatever way you can support, that'll be appreciated. Thank you.